I was drawn to the science of consciousness because I think I'm conscious and because I think other people are conscious too and because we don't have any idea what that even means. So one of my friends uh, jokes that I must have been born with an extra set of Y chromosomes because I'm always asking why about everything. And even as a child, I, I asked why, like children do, and my parents allowed me to keep asking. And so basically, I've never stopped. So in something like consciousness, which everyone has an intimate sense of knowing what that means, they know they're aware, I find it very curious. So I ask why. Why is it that we don't actually understand what gives rise to that sense of awareness? And as it turns out, it's one of the, the last frontiers in science itself. So we often think about exploring as exploring outwards. We go out into space, it's the final frontier. Well, actually, we also need to explore inside, so inner space. So I've been attracted to both sides, all kinds of exploration, and inner space costs a lot less than outer space. So that's why I do it. Because I always asked why about everything, I found and still find everything interesting. So I want to know everything. So I've studied many different topics, and in some respects, the, if you go into a conventional discipline, you find pretty quickly that there's a fair amount known about it. There's always some unknowns. But because in some areas there's a fair amount that can be known, I actually found it kind of boring. So I started looking for places where there's a lot that is not known because I'm interested in exploring the unknown. And as it turns out, that uh, the thing which, is, which we have the most intimate knowledge of and the least amount of information about is our own awareness, our consciousness. And so I've taken all of the tools and techniques that I've learned from many other disciplines and apply it to studying the nature of consciousness. And it turns out it's helpful to take a multidisciplinary approach because taking one approach is simply not enough. So in terms of formal training, uh, I have a, a background in music, violin performance, electrical engineering, cybernetics, control systems, and including biological control systems. At one point, I was actually doing rocket science that, that's part of control systems. Uh, and then experimental psychology, cognitive psychology, psychophysiology, neuroscience, physics, and contemplative science in the sense of meditation, to do, have done meditative practice since the 1970s. All of it, you can take a very traditional approach on. You can be an electrical engineer, you can be a physicist, you can follow those, those knowledge silos very deeply in each case and have a very interesting productive career. I could have done, and did for a while actually, in, in each one of those areas, worked as what I would call a traditionalist. And there's some reason for doing that. It, it makes a comfortable career. Uh, you don't have to ask too many questions. You don't have to push too many paradigms in the process. And it's comfortable. But I was never satisfied with that because I, I, wanted, I was always interested in the larger questions. Well, why am I here? What happens after you die? All of these big questions that come about that everyone asks. And there are some answers to it, but they tend to fall heavily into a religious side, and I was brought up a-religious, like it, not atheistic or even agnostic, but a-religious in the sense that it was never a topic of discussion. It just wasn't part of my life at all. So when I grew up, I was actually kind of surprised that there were people who, where their religious beliefs, which are based purely on faith, drove a lot of the way that they thought about things. Whereas for me, my beliefs are based on empiricism. It's what my experience says, both personally and in the laboratory. So I'm not saying one is better than the other, simply a different approach and taking advantage of many different disciplines at the same time. Why I ended up looking at the farther reaches of consciousness is because it's an area that is almost completely unknown. And it's more than that. It, if we don't understand something as important as our own sense of awareness, it would suggest that maybe science, which has been extremely good at, at figuring out a lot of things, including the health sciences, figured out a lot about the human being, about health and healing, well, maybe something has been overlooked. 